Hello, and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Today's organist is Brian Mathias, and I'm your host, Luke Howard. It's not all that unusual on this show to begin with an ending, a recessional or sortie, for example. Often the musical qualities of such works, their energy and buoyancy, fit them perfectly for either the opening of a recital or the conclusion of a service, and that's the case today as well. Brian opens the program with the majestic Finale Jubilante, written in 1959 by the English-Canadian organist and composer Healy Willen. Next up is a folk-like dance, the Grande Française from 1896 by Léon Bohlmann. Outside of the Suite Gothique, it's one of Bohlmann's best-known organ pieces, even though it was originally written for piano. It also has the distinction of being entirely diatonic in A minor. There isn't a single chromatic note in the entire piece, not even a G-sharp. And that gives the whole fabric of the music a kind of antiquated cragginess, it sounds much older than it really is.
still on the theme of connections between piano and organ repertoire, the composer Siegfried Karg Ellert was himself a pianist and quite a gifted one before he turned mid-career to writing organ music, even though he wasn't much of an organist. In his Opus 96 set of seven pastels from the Lake of Constance, or Bodensee, Karg Ellert uses the organ's symphonic possibilities to paint vivid musical landscapes. Number four from that set, titled The Reed Grown Waters, uses, not surprisingly, the organ's reed and flute stops to create a haunting portrait of the extensive reed beds along the lake's shoreline. Following that, Brian will play his own arrangement of Come, Come Ye Saints, a beloved Latter-day Saint hymn and a tradition at these organ concerts.
American folk hymn and spiritual wayfaring stranger is a deeply poignant, unequivocally sad hymn. In the broader repertoire of Christian hymnody, there are many texts that rejoice in God's goodness, that implore God for help in times of trouble and trust that he will respond. Even those hymns that speak of this life as a pilgrimage suggest that God will help us along the pathway home. But the heartbreaking words of Wayfaring Stranger express no hope at all that things will improve in this life, even with strong faith and devotion to God. The song's melody is thought to be perhaps Scottish in origin. The text might be derived from a German language hymn penned in 1816, but this spiritual's deeper message speaks directly to the oppressive conditions of African-American life in the 19th century. Each of the hymn's verses ends with the couplet, I'm just a going over Jordan, I'm just a going over home. It was common in African-American spirituals to refer to liberation from enslavement as crossing Jordan or going over Jordan, using a biblical metaphor so as to not raise suspicion too overtly among the oppressors. But too frequently, that freedom came only with death. In the verses themselves, we learn that the singer's father, mother, and siblings had already all crossed over into the next world. The life of wandering on this earth is, as the lyrics tell us, marked by sickness, toil, and danger, dark clouds, rough and steep pathways, and a pervasive sense of estrangement. You can feel the unfathomable weariness in the words. Finally, in the fourth verse, after death, the pilgrim exclaims, I'll drop the cross of self-denial and enter in my home with God. For many, even today, the cross of self-denial remains an oppressive burden and God's promised rest can seem very distant. The bleakness expressed in this hymn might be understood as a condemnation of those who profess a belief in Christ while ignoring the heavy burdens of their fellow wayfaring strangers. Perhaps that's where the hope lies in this song, that we might see more clearly the necessity of helping the weary, relieving the oppressed, and comforting the lonely and sad. We'll hear now Brian Mathias's own arrangement of the spiritual Wayfaring Stranger.
when Louis Vien was appointed titular organist at Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral in 1900. It was a promotion to one of the most coveted and high-profile organ positions in France. Vienne had previously served as Vidor's assistant at Saint-Sulpice, which, it has been argued, houses Cavalier Cole's magnum opus, a superior organ to Notre Dame. It was a professional move up, certainly, but Vienne spent the rest of his career playing an organ that, while justly renowned, was frequently in need of maintenance and repair during his tenure. He wrote his first organ symphony while working at Saint-Sulpice and his second in 1903 for the instrument at Notre Dame. We'll hear now in closing the sublime finale from that work, Vienne's Symphony No. 2 for organ.
Thank you for watching today's episode of Piping Up, featuring tabernacle organist Brian Mathias. We're glad you joined us. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square, streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.